What is going on, everybody? Frank here for the Bakersfield Gentleman, my brother Miguel at Culebra's Lounge here in Bakersfield, California. We continue now with our IPCPR 2019 review of the latest and greatest cigars to come out of the show. Uh, this week, or today, I should say this week, we've been doing cigars all week. Man, Every I'm day. Tired. Uh, this day, uh, we will be doing the Oscar Valladez Superfly. Now, they actually had a couple cigars come out. They had the Superfly and they had the Wild Hunter. Um, from the moment I saw this band, Mike, I was like, I want to get that cigar. You flipped your lid. I don't know what it is about this band, you guys. Yeah. It's just a super cool um, purple on black with some gold in it. And to me, it's just it's super fly. I dig it. It's, it's 100% um, understated for how awesome it is. I think they didn't um, over detail it. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad. I, it's right. It's super fly. And it's such a difference between this and the um, the Wild Hunter. Yes. Um, I really like the way they went completely polarizing opposites of each other. I mm -hmm. do like when companies do their, you know, not matching, but, you know, uniform look too. It's very elegant. This was a whole different direction. And I think that's uh, a very good idea to differentiate themselves. That's pretty awesome. And today we're going to be smoking one of the three sizes it comes in. This is the uh, Corona five and a half, five and a quarter. Uh, by 45, it also comes in a Toro, which is 6x54, okay. and a Super Gordo, which is 6.5x60. Um, this uses a Mexican San Andreas wrapper with a Honduran binder from the Copan region, and fillers from Honduras, Nicaragua, and the Dominican Republic. This is actually the first time the Dominican tobacco will be used in a this blend. That's pretty exciting, actually. I'm liking mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. From what we're told, strength's supposed to be a little up there. It's supposed to be one of their strongest ones I've ever made. Um, so in keeping with the line of... Uh, J Jacob's ladder from uh, the other day. Uh, I'm uh, up there. Uh, yeah, that's okay because yesterday we also had the uh, uh, excuse me the uh, sweet, sweet and spicy. spicy, which was not a strength but a spice bomb. Mm -hmm. So back to the strength, I'm okay with that. Let's uh, go ahead and cut this guy. I'm not quick. getting a whole lot of smell off of it, to be honest with you. No, I wasn't either. I was gonna yeah, I, I was hoping for a, a quick cold draw. See if that improves it any. Very easy draw. Hmm. There's definitely something there. Oh, there's spice right there. Right off the bat. It came down the center of the circuit. I could feel it. And just go straight down my throat. Yeah, I but felt that. But not just spice. There's something else there. Alrighty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I think now it's time to light this guy. No way around it. Nice. Nice long matches. Did we just get this? Got it from uh, Rosita. Rosita, oh, that's right. Rosita from Latin, uh, Poro Latina. If you haven't checked it out, check it out, guys. Oh, yeah, smart. Cedar spills, guys. Super easy. I like that. Ooh, there's some good spice right there. Yeah. Right off the bat. Ooh, that's dark flavoring. That's nice. It is already dark chocolate, coffee, and spice off wow. the initial draw, you guys. It's a nice draw. It's not too tight. It's just in that nice, slightly restricted area that you're going to get a good draw off but, of it. Uh, however, I do feel, to me, this size is a little small. I'm curious to know why they went with this instead of a traditional Robusto size. Um, yeah, I could, you know, maybe because of the strength that they're claiming it has, they wanted to maybe give somebody a smaller option to maybe have a, a quicker smoke, but, uh, awesome. yeah, we'll, we'll get into it, you guys, and, uh, we'll see how, how it stacks up to, uh, the rest of the stuff we've been smoking, the stuff we will smoke. All right, guys, so getting through this first third, it's actually a pretty quick smoke, uh, that's due to its thinner ring gauge and its ease of draw. Um, it's giving off plenty of great smoke, no oh, issues yeah. with the burn line. Um, I do need to take my band off already, though. Fantastic construction, in my opinion. Um, the only issue I will say is that because of the thinner ring gauge, the ash is very delicate. Uh, so you're going to want to ash it, or you also ash yourself. Um, I'll probably ash it twice per third. Uh, but it's up to you what you guys want to do with it. You'd say um, it's still pretty good ash, though, right? It's holding no, on. it's definitely it's definitely stacking nicely. It's mm -hmm. just with the thinner ring gauge um, and, and the semi-loose pack, I think, that's in there, 
It, it's very delicate and it will fall off and you'll ask yourself, so you don't want to do that. Now to the important part of the flavors. Uh, and keep in mind, I am pairing this with black coffee. Um, and I'm getting tons of coffee and dark bitter cocoa uh, in here. Uh, a little bit of wood there on the back note and definitely some nice pepper spice as well. Mm -hmm. um, but all the flavors are mixing together, 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 together beautifully, <laughs> in, in my opinion. I absolutely agree. I'm having iced coffee with a little bit of cream in it. I wanted a little something sweet once you told me how um, uh, strong and how kind of, it's really rich flavors. Mm -hmm. Everything you're, you're saying as far as flavors go, I definitely agree with. And I'd like to add in that they're sticking around for quite a while. So it's not just, oh, once you let the smoke out, it's pretty much gone. Yeah, it's a very uh, long finish. A very long finish. I'm loving that. Um, the strength, you know what? Medium to medium full so far. You know what? I really haven't felt the strength kick any way, shape, or form just yet. Um, I do see that changing maybe as we get further into the cigar. Yeah. Um, but comparing it to like the Jacob's Ladder, which I felt the strength right away, um, mm -hmm. this still hasn't gotten it for me yet. Now, that being said, they're saying this is the strongest Oscar Valle the cigar to date. Doesn't mean it's going to be a super strong cigar because all the other cigars I've had from have not been that that harsh. Oh, look at the Los Cabos from Recluse. Um, that one's the strongest in the Recluse line. It's not that strong, just a lot of good flavors in there. And the flavor, the strength level is just uh, raised on their own standards, I think. Exactly, what, yeah. exactly my point. Um, so it is a strong, it is the strongest cigar that Oscar Verde has put out, but that doesn't mean it's one of the strongest cigars out there on the market, guys. Uh, and right now I'm super, super enjoying the Superfly. Oh, 100%. All right, Mike, let's get into the next third. All right, guys, so getting into the second third, a lot of the same construction that we had in the first one. Uh, nice burn line, get smoke out, put in nice straw, but again, very delicate ash. I have ashed my cigar three times now, uh, and for a five and a quarter inch stick, that's kind of a bit to be doing every so often. Uh, but again, it is a thinner ring gauge, uh, so if you want to chance it, be very delicate with it, you can be. I keep saying the word delicate a lot. Huh, interesting. Uh, careful with it, I guess you could say is a better word. Um, you can do that or just ash it so you don't ash yourself or ash the lounge that you're at. I, yeah, I would uh, recommend just tapping it once in a while. Not a big issue. Uh, it's not like I need to keep relighting it or anything. I think that would be more of a problem for me. Mm -hmm. um, or if it was really flaky, that would be, yeah. but it's not. Yeah. Um, the ash is holding together very well, but staying on the cigar itself, it seems like it would fall off very easily. Mm -hmm. And I haven't tested it. I just keep ashing it in the ashtray. Yeah. Don't want to find that out right now, honestly. Yeah, as far as flavors goes, you guys, uh, I'm getting a lot of same flavors. Uh, maybe just a tad less of the spice, but still getting that coffee, that deep bitter cocoa, uh, that woodiness in there as well, and uh, it's quite enjoyable. Yeah, very much. It's pairing so. very well with the black coffee. Uh, it's going well with a little bit of sweet too. Um, I think the spice is sticking around a little bit longer than mm -hmm. it was before. That would be the only really noticeable change. Okay. But like you were saying, and I think I mentioned this before too, very long finish. Mm -hmm. Very much love that because I'm enjoying all the flavors I am getting. I like them sticking around like that. Excellent. All right, Mike, let's get into the last third and finish this out. All right, guys, so we got down to the nub, getting pretty warm, so we went and finished them off right there. We were able to smoke it down pretty far. Um, major key points on the cigar for the negative would be that it wasn't very transitional. The flavors were consistent, and the only one that really came in and out was that spice, the, um, the, the dark chocolate, the coffee, and the wood, and the nice tobacco. We're there the entire time from start to finish. That spice is the only thing that really came in and out for me uh, from third to third. So I would have liked to have seen a little bit more transition in the cigar. Uh, secondly, the ash did not hold on very well uh, because of that thinner ring gauge. But again, that's not a big uh, issue. Uh, it's just something you need to keep an eye out for so you don't ash yourself. Uh, thirdly, the strength did not pass the medium for me. It barely even got up to a medium for me, actually. Yeah. Uh, and for them claiming to be the strongest Oscar Vida cigar to date, I would have liked to have seen some more strength. Maybe a little bit more Lajero in there. Uh, to kick it up a bit so uh, we'll definitely have to try the larger size because we did get the uh the gordo and and see how that one differs and see if we come up with the same score for that one uh, other than that the the construction was really really good as far as uh the burn line um the overall construction of the cigar uh as far as you know the wrapper and all that and a uh, really good smoke output oh definitely i'd agree with that uh the flavors wise i'd agree with that uh, they did hold on for quite a bit after. It was a long finish, mm -hmm. but a little more complexity would have been nice, like you said. Um, I, yeah, I would definitely prefer a bigger size. I would like it to stick around a little bit longer. Um, I definitely like the uh, the appearance of it as far as the band goes. Yeah, really nice, really big like fan that. of that band, man. Nice dark uh, wrapper to it. So all that was great. And, but yeah, I think uh, a little bit longer for burn time and the ash holding on a little better would have been nice. Yeah. I didn't have any problem with the strength levels, but like you said, it could have been a little stronger and that would have been totally fine. Oh, absolutely. Um, 
all in all, uh, a, a very good cigar in my opinion. And Mike, what do we give it a final score of? For the Superfly, the final score we gave it was an 87 out of 100. All right, so that's a pretty strong score in my opinion. So um, good job to Oscar Vargas and, and their work on the Superfly. Definitely looking forward to trying the Wild Hunter. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Here uh, in just a few days. So we will continue with our IPCPR 2019 cigar reviews uh, tomorrow. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Give us a like uh, and a sub on YouTube. And you can also find us on Facebook at The Baker So Gentlemen and on Instagram and Twitter at BakoJet661. Keep up to date with all of our reviews. And if you guys want to support the channel, you guys can always reach us on our Patreon at patreon.com backslash BakoJet661. And we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, guys.